Hey guys, Ray, Spray Wash Pro. In this video, we're gonna be going over a lot of the specifics on this water tower cleaning that we just took care of with Spray Wash Exterior Cleaning. I hope you enjoy it. If you think of any other questions, uh, at the very end, my email address will be there. Feel free to drop me a line. Uh, this is also a advantage and benefit of being a Spray Wash Pro member. Uh, it is private, so if you will, please don't share it because uh, the members that are paying members of Spray Wash Pro that are seeing it, I think y'all deserve it and uh, not really willing to share it with uh, the general public. Thanks, guys. I appreciate y'all watching this and feel free to reach out if I can ever help you with jobs like this. All right, we're going to start out by addressing the 800 pound gorilla or the $64,000 question. Should I say, everybody wants to know, Ray, what did you charge for something like this? And you know, it's one of these things that I have not on Spray Wash Academy. I have not told anybody that because one, I want to share this information with two, with you. Second off, I think that if people don't have the, the actual parameters, um, understanding of, of where that bid comes from, they really wouldn't understand it. Some guys will be like, wow, you're way too cheap. Other guys will be like, man, that's great money. Um, you know, I could say I charge $20,000 for it. And, oh man, that's great money. I could say I charge $5,000 for it. Well, oh man, that's great money. But they don't know the expenses involved with it. Uh, they don't know the work that goes into it, the setup, the prep, all that great stuff. But I am gonna share this with y'all. Uh, here's what we charged for it. Uh, we did this job on April 22nd. Um, I've got my contact information blocked out there. It was $8,913 was what our bill was for. Um, one of the reasons I love doing this with these guys on page two of it, look at that. It was paid by a credit card for $8,970, I'm sorry, $8,913 uh, very next day. So um, we did that job on a Monday. We finished it on a Monday. We got paid on a Tuesday. That's really fast turnaround whenever dealing with a government entity. They put it on their credit card. We like that. Um, furthermore, my bid specifics on here, specialty water tower cleaning entire tower, spray wash to clean the entire exterior of the water tower using professional soft wash process in order to avoid damage to the surface. Solution to include algicides, fungicides, and phosphate-free detergents to extend the life of cleaning and provide optimal results. Spray wash to maintain highest safety standards and follow OSHA approved guidelines for this project vehicular pedestrian traffic to be controlled to be provided and water to be provided on site down below it says safety equipment this project requires the use of ppe harnesses lanyards etc all needed equipment included in rate the bid was really that simple didn't get into a, a whole lot of specifics on there um, but it was just that easy to um, to do Okay, this is a fairly standard type pedestal tower or podium tower. Um, this was a 750,000 gallon tank according to the city of Tallahassee. Uh, obviously no landscaping around it and the site plan was really easy to deal with. I found that these types of towers that are on the podium or pedestal base are actually much easier to clean than the kind that are on the framework around it. Uh, they have like the exoskeleton holding it up. A lot of people say those are the old style uh, water towers. Now looking at the site plan here, we really got quite lucky on cleaning this and that led to the lower price that we charged. Over to the right hand side, I do have some high power transmission lines that we had to keep in mind. Uh, over on the left hand side, I have a holding pond and a wooded area, but I don't have houses budding directly up against this water tower. Now one thing that I do have to worry about is I am in a neighborhood. and 
gosh knows if anything goes wrong, all of these neighbors saw this tank get cleaned. So we wanted to make sure we were on our P's and Q's, wanted to use a lot of cover scent, uh, wanted to make sure we used Agent Halt at the end, and did everything to just make this job perfect because we'd be under the scrutiny of all the neighborhoods, as would the company that hired us, uh, the city of Tallahassee. We don't want to do anything that would make them look bad either in the neighbor's eyes. Now for access on this job, we chose to use a crane as opposed to a lift. Uh, the crane in particular that we chose was a 170 ton uh, crane. Uh, whenever you rent a crane, that comes with an operator. Uh, in fact, because of the power lines, there's an OSHA regulations that this crane actually had to have a separate spotter with it. So they sent out another tender vehicle um, to carry some counterweights and to carry some ground pads and that person who was driving that semi he acted as the spotter all day long just because we were in a close vicinity to power lines. Now a good crane operator really makes your life a breeze. Uh, they're fantastic. They can put you right you know on the money but one thing about the cranes is it's incredibly slow to set them up and move them. They are also incredibly expensive too. Uh, the payment plan we chose on this uh, crane uh, was $3,000 and that was $250 an hour with an eight hour minimum plus a $500 move in and a $500 move out fee. I could have chosen a plan that didn't give me an eight hour minimum uh, and didn't give a uh, move in move out fee. That would have been about $400 an hour. I actually worked out a lot better uh, choosing that way and the crane wound up costing me $3,000 for the day. Now our operator said this would require 185 feet of boom up there. So that was, uh, they also call that stick, 185 foot of stick or boom. Uh, that's how high up um, that one main pole is on there. He had the ability to put more should we have needed it. Turned out to not need that. At the top of the cell phone array on this tower, it was roughly 165 feet, uh, 160 feet, somewhere in that range. You always want to do some pre-planning on jobs like this whenever you're getting a crane in there. Call up your crane company and have them come out and do a walkthrough. Walk around there on the site itself. Uh, really get planned out how much you're going to have to move this crane before you set do your work. Uh, moving the crane can take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on how much boom or stick you have to pull back in. Uh, the resets can really take a lot of time, so having a minimum of moves uh, will really save you a lot of time and a lot of money since you're paying hourly but for this crane. Uh, and trust me, the crane guys never get into a real big hurry either. Um, which I don't really want them to because they've got literally my life in their hands at that point. So we've talked about getting the crane set up. I want to backtrack just a little bit though and talk about you know your initial crane consultation. You actually want to get out there with the crane company for a preliminary walk around so that the day of the job you're ready to go. You know exactly what to do. You're not wasting any time trying to figure stuff out. They also can come out and then tell you exactly what size you need um, and some of the pitfalls and hazards of the job. Check for underground piping, check for um, concrete they can't roll over, make sure they've got good access to that property. So very important to have a preliminary meeting with your crane company uh, out there because it, it's a little more difficult than using a lift. Um, but at the same time, it's a lot quicker and faster than using a lift as well. And it's more expensive too. Uh, now going over some of our equipment that we had on here. I made this little list out. Um, I'm assuming this is not backwards, I'll check it and see. But uh, water tower equipment list, we've got uh, harnesses and lanyards, hard hats, that's actually an OSHA requirement that you wear a hard hat and that whoever's in the man basket wear a hard hat as well. 
Uh, we had four walkie-talkies. We gave one to the crane operator. One went to the sprayer and the basket. Uh, one went to me, and one went to my, my other ground guy out there. I had a crew of two guys on this job. Uh, Sean Gross, you might see him in some of the pictures. He came down to visit me uh, just to be on this job. Um, we're great friends and uh, we're actually going on vacation a little bit later this week. So he, came, he and Alani came down a couple days early uh, just to hang out since uh, we were doing this project. And he could get up there and uh, have a chance to, to spray some on there. Anyway, um, so I had two salaries and me on there. Three people were plenty to do this job any more people would have been absolute overkill on this. Um, we used two different booster pumps. Uh, I used my flatbed as my spray rig on this job and um, had our main booster pump and then I had an, another booster pump for rinsing as well on there. Um, that booster pump was a direct drive. It's experimental that, that I got from Tim. Um, I could have done the same thing with a pressure washer if I wanted to, but wanted to keep some stuff wet, wanted to keep some landscape wet. And, um, you know, we could also do some rinsing from the bottom area and, and not take the hose away from the guy uh, in the basket. Um, we had uh, three different runs of hose at 250 foot each. Um, and we made sure that hose was color coded for hose management issues on there. Uh, we wanted to be able to see, you know, a yellow hose, a red hose, and a blue hose. Blue was our feed hose. Red was our, I'm sorry, blue was going to my, my ground booster. Yellow was going to my high booster. Red was my water feed hose, I believe, on there. So it was a real quick glance to see whichever hose was moving uh, because I don't want the basket caught up. I don't want to get it um, make it tight. I don't want to get it hung on anything. Uh, and it was real quick to be able to identify it by color. Uh, other uh, things that we used, uh, we used 50 gallons of SH. I rolled up with 50 gallons. I had, tw I'm sorry, I rolled up with 70. Still had 20 left at the end. Um, we used 10 gallons of Apple Wash Secret Agent Blend. I blend that here in my office. Uh, my Apple Wash was prior cut down to that, about a 50-50 on there. So I would take five gallons of, of my cut down apple wash and mix it with five gallons of secret agent to use the soap for our surfactant. Uh, I used one gallon of agent halt at that project as well. Uh, some other additional expenses we had, um, well I had two crew members for labor. Um, we had, um, I gave the tip guys, some so the, the crane guys a tip at the end of the day, uh, handed them 50 bucks, said, you know, go get dinner, uh, a couple of beers on us. And I bought lunch for everybody, lunch for six people. Um, my two technicians, uh, Sean, me, and Crane guys, that cost 50 bucks. We went to Chick-fil-A, or I brought Chick-fil-A back. Um, anyhow, and, and there's a reason that I did that too. And I want y'all to think about this. I didn't necessarily want my crane operators taking a break. I wanted them to eat with us so that whenever we got done, they would get the message and be done as well. Um, it just kind of helps us keep the day moving along. I'm not sure what they're used to doing for lunch. I uh, wanted to keep them on the job site and didn't know if they usually took an hour break or not. We tend to eat really fast and uh, like to get back on it. So uh, there was an ulterior motive there. It wasn't just being nice. Hey, we're getting a little bit long on time here. We're at about uh, 13 minutes so far in the video. I'm going to go ahead and end this, and we'll start again with part two uh, whenever we get into the ratios and some of the job specifics on there. So look out for part two of the crane job. Thanks.